Toshiba Device and Storage Corporation. E-Learning. Basics of Operamps. This course is intended for beginners and explains the characteristics, basic operation, internal operation, and negative feedback of operamps as well as the electrical characteristics specific to them. Chapter 1. What is an opamp? What is an opamp? Opamp stands for operational amplifier. An opamp is so called because it is used for various computational operations such as comparison, addition, subtraction, differentiation, and integral. Figure shows the electronic symbol for operamps. An opamp has five terminals, 1, non-inverting input, 2, inverting input, 3, output, 4, positive power supply, and 5, negative power supply. Here, inverting and non-inverting indicate the polarity with respect to the output. The voltage applied to the non-inverting input is amplified by a factor of AV with respect to the inverting input potential. The output has the same phase as the non-inverting input. The voltage applied to the inverting input is also amplified by a factor of AV with respect to the non-inverting input potential. The output has the opposite phase to the inverting input. As a result, the output provides a voltage equal to a difference in voltage between the inverting and non-inverting inputs multiplied by AV, therefore, when the inverting and non-inverting inputs have the same voltage and phase, the output voltage becomes zero. When the inverting and non-inverting inputs have the same voltage and opposite phases, the output has the same phase as the non-inverting input and provides a voltage equal to twice the difference between their voltages multiplied by AV. Despite a simple configuration, operamps provide close to ideal characteristics as amplifiers. Therefore, they are widely used for various purposes in a wide range of IoT home appliance and other electronic applications. For example, operamps are used to amplify analog signals from sensors and measuring instruments. Characteristics of Operamps, what is the ideal op-amp? Generally, amplifiers should neither affect the preceding circuit nor be affected by the subsequent circuit. Therefore, amplifiers should have high input impedance and low output impedance. Operamps have characteristics close to these requirements. The following compares the ideal and real op-amps. Although there is no such thing as an ideal op-amp, you can assume the ideal op-amp early in the design stage. However, you should consider the differences between the ideal and real op-amps when you proceed to the detailed design stage. For example, if the input impedance of an op-amp is low, its input voltage is derived from the input impedance of that op-amp and the output impedance of the preceding device. The low input impedance of an op-amp also affects its feedback loop. If the output impedance of an op-amp is large, its output voltage is derived from the output impedance of that op-amp and the impedance of its load. In typical applications, however, the input impedance of an op-amp is negligibly large compared with the output impedance of the preceding circuit, and the output impedance of the op-amp is negligibly small compared with the impedance of the subsequent load. Therefore, these impedances do not normally have a significant impact. The same is true of the other parameters shown above. It is necessary, however, to check their impact when creating a detailed design. Internal operation of an op-amp Figure shows a simplified equivalent circuit for an op-amp. As you see, it is composed of multiple MOSFETs. For a CMOS op-amp to work properly, these MOSFETs need to operate in the saturation region. Figure shows the saturation region of the MOSFET. In this region, the MOSFET operates as follows. 1. As the gate source voltage increases, the drain current increases. 2. As the drain source voltage increases, the drain current increases slightly. A slight change in drain current causes a considerable change in drain source voltage. The portions of the op-amp provide the following functions. Differential input pair amplifies a difference in voltage between the VIN plus and VIN minus inputs. Current mirror provides an equal amount of current to QP1 and QP2 comprising the differential input pair. The current mirror acts as load resistance for the differential input pair. Typically, the output of the current mirror, i.e., the drain terminal of the differential input pair, has high impedance, which is difficult to obtain with the typical resistor. As a result, the first stage differential amplifier has a high gain. Such a resistive load composed of transistors is called an active load. Current source determines the amount of current that flows to the differential input pair in the common source amplifier. The current source acts as an active load for the common source amplifier common source amplifier provides the drive current for an external load connected to the output and compensates for the gain of the first stage differential amplifier. Before going into the operation of an op-amp, let's discuss the drain voltage of QN1 in the current mirror. 
the drain source voltage, VDSN1, and the drain gate voltage, VDGN1, of QN1 are equal. Figure plots the conditions under which VDS equals VDG is satisfied. Since the resulting curve looks like the IFVF curve of a diode, the connection of QN1 is called the diode connection. In figure, the drain current is large because it is the ID VDS curves of a discrete N channel MOSFET with a large channel area. The internal MOSFETs of an IC have a drain current 2 to 3 orders of magnitude lower than this. As figure indicates, after the drain current exceeds a certain point, at a VDS of 1.5 volts or higher, a slight change in the drain current hardly affects the drain source voltage. Next, let's consider how the current source works. First, let's consider a circuit without a current source as shown in figure. The subsequent common source amplifier is identical to that of the previous op amp. An equal voltage, VDD minus VN, is applied to the differential inputs, VN plus and VN minus. Hence, VSG equals VIN. At this time, when the drain current, IDP1, is conducted, the drain voltage of QP1 settles to a voltage at which VSDP1 VDSN1 VDD. Since IDP1 is copied by the current mirror, the circuit composed of QP2 and QN1 has the same voltage relationship as this. Suppose that the voltage applied to VN plus and VN minus increases by delta V2, VDD minus VN plus delta V. Since the circuit of figure has a current mirror, the same amount of current flows to the differential input pair. However, without a current source, the currents flowing to the differential input pair decrease by the same amount. As a result, the drain source voltage of QN2 connected to the common source amplifier also decreases. This is equivalent to a decrease in the gate source voltage of QN3, VGSN3, of the common source amplifier. The common source amplifier has a current source, QP4, which raises the drain source voltage, VDSN3, to oppose a decrease in VGSN3, keeping the current constant. In other words, the output voltage, V out, increases even though the VN plus and VN minus inputs have the same voltage and phase. It is essential that the op amp have a constant output when a common mode input, same input voltage, within the range shown in the datasheet is applied to VN plus and VN minus. The circuit of figure cannot satisfy this requirement. Next, let's consider the circuit of figure with the current source, QP3. Suppose, for example, that the input voltage applied to VN minus and VN minus increases by delta V2, VDD minus VN plus delta V. Since this circuit has a current source, the current flowing to the differential input pair remains unchanged. Therefore, the drain source voltage of QN1, VDSN3, remains unchanged. Likewise, VDSN2 remains unchanged. Therefore, the output voltage is constant for the common mode input voltage. The VSDP3 of QP3 compensates for delta V. The current flowing to the differential input pair changes because the source drain voltage of the current source changes. Since the drain source voltage of the current source changes, the drain current, ID, changes. However, ID changes only slightly with VDS. Therefore, ID does not change significantly. So, the role of the current source is to keep the output voltage constant when the common mode input voltage is applied to VN plus and VN minus. Next, let's consider the case in which different voltages are applied to VN plus and VN minus. 1. Suppose that VN plus and VN minus initially have the same voltage, VDD minus VN and then the VN minus voltage increases by delta V. 2. VSGP1 decreases, causing IDP1 to decrease by delta IP1. However, as explained above, QN1 has a diode connection. Therefore, VDSN1 remains unchanged. So, the drain voltage of QP1 remains constant. 3. The current mirror copies the decreased IDP1 to the drain current of QN2, IDN2. 4. This is contradictory since the drain current of QN3, IDP3, in the current source remains unchanged. Therefore, the drain voltage of QN2, VDSN2, increases to increase the current flowing through QN2. 5. You might think that an increase in VDSN2 causes VSDP2 to decrease, causing IDP2 to decrease. Note, however, that the current from the current source, IDP3, remains unchanged. Since IDP1 has decreased by delta IP1, IDP2 should increase, not decrease. Therefore, the source voltage of QP2 increases. 6. The source gate voltage of QP1, VSGP1, increases, causing its drain current, IDP1, to increase. 7. IDP1 is copied to the drain current of QN2, IDN2. Then, the operation returns to step 3. Eventually, the drain voltage of QN2, VDN2, increases from the initial voltage. The increased VDN2 is transferred to the subsequent common source amplifier. 
the VGSN3 of the common source amplifier increases, causing IDN3 to increase. However, the increase in IDN3 is constrained by QP4 of the current source. Since the increase in VGSN3 does not lead to an increase in IDN3, the drain source voltage of QN3, VDSN3, decreases. This means that when the VIN minus voltage increases, the V-out voltage decreases, 